Welcome really back, cute. everybody, to the Sick Podcast. Recruits Draftcast. Grant is checking his phone because he's he's currently texting with uh, a very prominent player, uh, newly newly signed to the NHL. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, there have been uh, omissions to the U18 Canada team. Certain players that will not participate that we were expecting. So we'll get into that. Um, the end of the season, the end of the regular season is upon us. Uh, for some, it means playoffs. For others, it means draft. So uh, we're going to do a little tankathon simulation. We're going to talk about a big matchup coming Saturday between Montreal and Ottawa. One point separates the two teams for uh, potentially two spots. Uh, it's 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 a mess, but we'll, we'll we'll dive into that. We got we got the Montreal side, we got the Ottawa side, so I think it'll be a good discussion. Uh, later on, we're gonna get to Rocco's riser of the week, and then it's time for Grant's prospect of the week, and we're gonna cap it off with our Habs prospect of the week. Let's get started. Turn up your volume because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL Draft and Scouting Podcast. It's gonna be sick. All right, producer Shane here, joined by my amazing co-host, as always, Grant McCag, Rocco Zappia. Gentlemen, how are we today? A-plus, man. Love it. Working on my third week with a cold, but uh, hey, I wouldn't miss this for the world. Absolutely. No, no, that's it. And uh, I think I think the timing of this show is is pretty good because, uh, you know, just, just before we get, we jumped on here, Elliot Friedman dropped a, a, an an, an expected bomb i think everybody kind of knew it was coming but uh lane hudson is officially signing with the montreal canadians and grant you can actually confirm this because you talked yeah. to the source himself yeah i got it right here uh, <laughs> i just said welcome aboard and said thank you so you yeah. wouldn't you know there'd be big question marks if uh you know if it wasn't true i guess like, what are you it. talking about uh but I said, going to get some NHL action, I hope. And he said, we'll see. So, I mean, I would, I would suspect that that's. Yeah, <laughs> he will. I he mean, will. if Farrell, if Farrell and uh, Harris, you know, agreed to NHL contracts that's on it. the basis that they wouldn't go to the AHL, they'd play, they play to end the season. Lane Hudson, it's going to be the same deal. So uh, yeah. good for him. I think Pinto was like that too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, definitely would be cool. There we go. So, yeah, it would be very cool. Friend, friend of the show, Lane Hudson. If, yeah. If great, you're watching this day. episode and, and you haven't seen it yet, we had Lane on. Uh, we had a great discussion with him. So after you watch this, go tune in on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's he's a great guy. Honestly, one of my favorite guests we've had on. And, and I think I speak for most Habs fans or all of them when I say very excited to see him uh, – Don the Bleu Blanc Rouge. I think he's going to be uh, an electric player, something that the Habs have been missing for quite some time. So, granted, you know yeah. what? Mike Matheson has been fantastic this year. Uh, 60 points as a defenseman is no joke. He's, I believe, eighth in defenseman points this year. So, props to him. He's He, he is quite the dynamic player, but Lane Hudson's just at another level. So, uh, looking forward to seeing that. Now... We've got uh, Rocco tug tied like it's first time ever. Like he doesn't know what to say. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, not, no, not exactly the, a sense prospect. I, I, I don't get in the habit of cutting you guys off. Eh? Someone's got to. Someone's got to wait oh. their turn around here. Yo, you learned from the first couple episodes. Okay, that's, good. That's it. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, it was funny. Like you know, Lane Hudson's been trending since last night and. Yeah. You know, just about every tweet's like, why isn't he signed yet? And you see those memes of people tapping their feet, you know, and all that waiting. Terrible. But, I mean, you got to give the, you know, yeah. the main reason why uh, Jack Hughes, or Jack Hughes, Kent Hughes was at the game last night was to see his son, yeah. you know, and, and to support him. 
he just happened to play on BU as well. He wasn't going to go in the dressing room with a rigging contract and, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, sorry you lost here. Sign right here. You know, That's like it. you got to give the kids, you, you typically give them at least a half a day to, because you could tell after the game that Lane was pretty distraught. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's your last college game and you lost. And he's so competitive. He, you know, you give him time to breathe. Uh, in fact, I'm a little, almost a little surprised that he signed this quickly, to be honest with you. I, yeah. I thought maybe this evening or tomorrow, but uh, hey, you know, it was no secret that he was coming out and, uh, um, you know, like I, I suspect that the, he'll play. I don't know if he'll play the against Ottawa because I'm Detroit. not sure they really want to win that one. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I, like I was saying with Tony last night, like who's going to pull their goalie first and what yeah. periods are going to be in, you know? Second period, you know, pull the goalie. I guess there'd probably be the NHL wouldn't would kind of frown upon that, eh? But I don't uh, think I don't think that would go over so well. <laughs> yeah. you know, just, just, yeah. just, just what the Sens need, eh? To get punished another draft pick for doing something stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. No, it's uh that should be a good game on Saturday night. It's uh, you know, is it gonna be high scoring or low scoring? It, like what's the over under you know, I wouldn't know which way to go on that. It could over. Have you watched the Suns goalies this year? Just take the over <laughs> yeah. every game. Take the over. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, the the players are gonna play. You know, they're gonna they're gonna yeah. try, right? They're gonna freaking yeah. give their all. They always do. Um, you know, coaches might make a couple of uh, funny decisions during the game, but even the, the coaches want to win too, really. So. You yeah, know, it's the sure. one good thing about ever since the, you know, that season that a team that will, shall rename nameless uh, tanked pretty hard and they changed the uh, the lottery, uh, you know, yeah. so that so that the bottom team but didn't get the first pick guaranteed. Um, teams teams try, you know, they don't players don't uh, players and coaches certainly don't uh, tank on purpose, so. It's all good. Speaking well, of tank. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that actually right now. Okay. Um, okay. So as we mentioned, right, Saturday, Montreal, Ottawa, Grant and I will be rooting for the Senators and Rocco will be rooting for the Habs because <laughs> as we see here, uh, Montreal currently stands at 73 points. Ottawa is at 74. Same amount of games played. So uh, the difference between five and seventh overall could potentially be big, right? Uh, you know, we, we've heard Rocco say he wants Parek. Uh, we know the Habs, you know, they, they'd love to see a guy like Caden Lindstrom fall to there. So uh, this is sort of a must-lose game for both teams. Uh, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how <laughs> that one pans out. But we thought we'd have a bit of fun today. Uh, you know, we did our mock drafts. Not too long ago, but we, you know, this was assuming that there would be no changes to the order. Now, with the lottery simulation, which should probably look something like this, unless you know some of these teams start winning like crazy. Granted, there's only like three games left. Uh, the order should be pretty much like this. So we're gonna have a pretty good idea of what this could look like. Um, how many sims do we want to run, guys? Till till the Habs are the Sends or finish point. Finished. Let's start it up. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey! Okay. Second overall. Okay. We can Second end right overall. here. We yeah. just need to do one. That's good. Yeah. Well, uh, this should this should be good. Let Grant say who's Montreal's getting second overall, so he could get just get ripped by everybody in the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which honestly, like uh, it makes Artyom, me smile. Artyom Artyom is would Oof. be my guy. That it. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, no. Um, oh, I'd go Demidov. Absolutely. I take the, I take the flyer on the, the Russian. We'll I be discussing that a little later too. <laughs> I think you have. Uh, what, are the, what are the Habs faithful going to, going to think of that? Like he's only got one year, you know, unlike Michkov, who's got three year had a three year contract still. Yeah. He's only got one more year in Russia. So that makes it a lot more attractive too, right? Mm -hmm. You can get them over, 
it seems like uh, there's, you know, they're still coming over when their contracts expire. Yep. So, uh, you know, one year you have to wait on them. And then, I mean, two years from now, how good is Demidov going to be, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I just got the... I just got the email from Club Canadien confirming that the, that the you know they signed Lane Hudson. So he's going to play so we'll tomorrow, confirm now. It's tomorrow night, I think. Mm-hmm. I hope. Who uh, who is uh, Ottawa playing their last two last two games? I got uh, Boston and New York, and both and both of those games are the last game for those other teams. Ooh, okay. Well, we, we could not. We like it could be a situation where Ottawa is not playing. The other team's full lineup, depending yeah, if they're, if they're locked into the spot. Like the, the like this weekend is going to tell everything. But Ottawa might Ottawa could have a chance to play some not full lineups here. And yeah. Detroit's going to be full bore because they, you know, yeah, they're pushing. They have to win to get in the playoffs. And and Montreal mm. plays Detroit twice to end it. So yeah, Ottawa would you know be best served to. To lose on Saturday, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, they were, yeah, I mean, it's fine. So as, long scenario, they don't pass, as long as they don't pass Calgary, I'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, Calgary's closing in. Actually, they they they're one point away. So top seven, top seven would be would be nice. Yeah, yeah. And in this scenario, you don't drop any, right? No, that's it. Yeah. The top, the two teams that move up were in the top. Yeah top five or whatever. So mm-hmm. Chicago obviously would, I mean, Celebrini and uh, oh. that's how it turned out. The top pick two years in a row, Celebrini and Bedard. Talk about your rebuild. Uh, Come on. Uh, quick rebuild, eh? <laughs> Give them oh two years God. and look out. They're vying that's for ridiculous. a ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, San Jose dropping at three is just a heartbreaker. Like really? that would be tragic. They're uh, a wild card, eh? Like I don't yeah. know what at three. If they came to three, I don't know what they would do. Uh, like, they've drafted the last couple of years some pretty high skill type picks, but you know, geez, Lindstrom there, you know, six foot four center. Well, he'd look great in their prospect pool, but so would a couple other guys. I mean, wow. what, what do they have on defense right now? I know you'd hate well, to see them take. It. I you know you'd hate to see them take Perak, but gee, no, I, I know that's I know. the one. I, I don't one, see man. how if if Perak. I mean, I didn't see the game last night, but shut out. You know, I, I imagine I will. I'm just imagining they didn't play too poorly defensively. They shut mm-hmm. out. They shut out the Sioux. So uh, he keeps it up, boy. San Jose. I just, I have a hard time uh, believing that they'd pass on. You know. Uh, well, that's it. Replacing uh, Eric Carlson, right? Right. Yeah. From a couple of years ago. So, uh, I mean, they could. Frank Perec would be a twenty-five to thirty-minute defenseman in San Jose with any year, probably. So, mm-hmm. and That's then like, right now they, like, who do they have? Right, they have Shakir Mukamadulin. Yeah, no, you know, I, that's about it. Well, they got they got Kale and Addison running their power play now, but I don't know if like I don't know if that's the solution for them. Might be a step up with Perec, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, a step. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't know that he's uh, the whole floor up. Do you think uh, Anaheim's got a pretty good young defense coming? So at four, be tough, difficult to see them passing on Lindstrom. I think. Yeah. You know, I've seen a lot. I, I've actually seen a lot of Ducks fans clamoring for Lovshunov. They are under the impression that he's oh, like that that Here's missing open. piece in a sense where. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he's a different style of player than, say, a, a Mintikov or a Zellweger, and he's on the right side. So apparently, they, I mean, I'm not familiar with which sides they have, you know, but apparently they're, they're pretty deep on the left, not so much on the right. So if if Anaheim goes Levshunov, I mean, that changes things a lot. It, different than Min, Minchikov in what regard? Do they think that, he, that Levshunov is good defensively? Because if That's if they the think impression that, that they're, they're in, under. They're yeah. in for a... They're in for a <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've been seeing. Like I, I've been looking at a few comments yeah, from different well, fan bases, trying to get a a sense of where you know they want their teams crossed, to go. Fingers and, crossed that they take Lev Shunov fourth that'd overall. That'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. But uh, yeah, no, I've seen I've seen a lot of Anaheim fans go for yeah. wanting Lev Shunov. Uh, yeah, well, they aren't scouts, are they? They're fans. No, no, and they're in California, so I mean. <laughs> 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 anyway, 
Okay, well, let's do another simulation. Uh, we got to get Ottawa in here. Do another one. Oh, Calgary. No one. In no for one. Number one. No. Go no, again. this is not forget good. <laughs> forget this. Go again. We don't need this one. Calgary. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> Calgary. Uh... They're taking a Ginla one. Calling it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tell me that they couldn't use. I mean, every team can use Celebrini, but that would be a. That would be a fantastic spot for him, you know. Oh my god! Uh, he'd become the face of the franchise, and um, right away, yeah. Calgary needs to catch a break too. Like they've been in this new land for so long, where yeah. they're like kind of okay, but they're still kind of shit at the same time. Like I don't know, I don't like. Have they, they ever had a? They've never had a top pick, have they? What's that? No, that's what I mean. They've never been bad enough to be good again. Like, what's right. the highest pick they've had? Like, uh, Sam Bennett, fourth? That's about it, eh? Yeah. Monaghan. Monaghan, Bennett. But no Monaghan. top three picks that I can no. remember. Like it. They stay in this this mediocre mediocrity yeah. cycle, right? It's I just... wouldn't, you know, I'd prefer that to Chicago. Absolutely. First pick again. I actually but that means that mind. the Habs and the Sens move down. So. Oh, well. Mm. Yeah. But one spot, big deal. Columbus, uh, Columbus, yeah. Well, Trevor'd be happy with that. It'd make up for last year's kerfuffle there. So now they haven't had a top. They haven't had a top five pick in 10, 10 years. Kachuk at number six, but Bennett was the last one before that. Wow. Right, right. Oh yeah, Kachuk too. How could I forget Kachuk? Right. Okay. Eh. And then because uh, you don't like cause you don't like the Kachuks anymore. <laughs> Any more, any less. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, let's do another one. San Jose falling to three again. Yeah. Wow. Well, we know who they'll pick. Perek. Brutal. That's, that's who. Uh, that's who Rocco wants him to pick. Okay. Not uh, much boo. movement here. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago gets him twice now. Let's yeah. see another one. Oh, Jesus. Okay. A follow. How many t- places would they be moving up? Eight. I, they move up eight spots. Oh, St. Cool. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis wins. Uh, how does that work again? You can only move up ten spots. Yeah, that's it. So basically, yeah. they won the lottery. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't like that yeah. too much. No, this is a disaster. That's what, awful. Ottawa would be picking ninth. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they'll be um, getting another. They'll be getting another left hand D probably. Be getting like Lev Shunov or something like that. Wow. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Oh, well. Wow. If he's there, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I, I don't know. know. I know. He could, he could be gone. He could go. Like he could get. I don't think it's. I don't think it's as crazy as we're making it out to be that he goes top five. Like I. Like, I don't. There's know. a real possibility. It's mm-hmm. only me. It's only me uh, saying it's crazy, and that it's not. I'm not saying it's crazy from the viewpoint that it won't happen. I just wouldn't do it. No, that's it. no, and that's and that and that's fair. But like, I wouldn't be. It wouldn't surprise me if he ends up being the first. D off, off the no, board. no, no. He went into college. He's a big kid. He can skate. He put up good, good up, good numbers. So hey, yeah. If you didn't watch him that closely, you'd love him. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're picking him top five, you watch him pretty closely. I think. Yeah. Well, if you got him top five, you didn't watch him that closely. But anyway, okay, let's move on. Yeah, let's do another one because this is not good. And basically no no movement here. Anaheim moves to two. Chicago drops to three. This is this is a likely outcome, right? This, well, this is what we can probably expect. Something I, along these lines. I you know, I I wouldn't have a big issue with San Jose getting the top no. pick. I certainly would prefer it to Chicago getting it again. Yes, they um, know. Screw them. Yeah. And nothing. San Jose and San Jose is just I mean, even with the top pick, you know, they could be years away from being a real true contender. So, yeah, uh, you know, if any of those teams I actually prefer other than Montreal, it'd be San Jose to get the top pick. So I'm in that boat as well. Well, we'll give Ottawa one more. Yeah. Last one here before we move on. Hi, look at that. (laughs) Same thing. Hold on. on. No, we got to do this again. Ew! 
Oh. Seattle and Calgary, eh? Seattle and Calgary. Wow. Uh, Seattle could use a guy. Yeah, definitely. Use many guys, but I don't know. Yeah. And Not maybe moving favorite. up quite a few spots. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah. just like just as per usual, Sens get stiffed. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> then move up one spot at all the whole simulation. No. Yeah. Uh, I like well, I like the first the first one. The first one was pretty good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I did a simulation earlier and Montreal was second in that one too. So I, I think, think it's meant yeah. to be. They're gonna move yeah. into the top two. I would love that. And you know, the guy that would likely be at, at two, we're gonna we're gonna talk about him later because he's still uh still oh, tearing it up. Out of the bag. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not naming him, but you know what? I'm I'm in, I'm insinuating who our, our prospect of the week is. But before we do that, <laughs> before we do that, uh we had some interesting news today that uh both Berkeley Catton and Caden Lindstrom would not join Team Canada for the U18s. This is <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a surprise because like fourth you know, down. we talked Berkeley Catton has had disappointing playoffs. We you know, we'd like to see him play at, at this type of level, uh international competition like that that's the type of games that you know, you want to see a prospect stand out and maybe that would you know, boost his, his draft stock and and Kane Lindstrom was hurt most of the year so uh scouts missed out on a lot of his games uh yeah I don't know this this is this is weird this is really weird I don't know a lot of scouts that uh went to see Catton in the playoffs either mm -hmm. and I think most of them were counting on seeing him at the U18 so be doing a lot of video watching you know um yeah it it may hurt cat and stock a little bit because he didn't have a great playoff although i was talking to one scout about it and he did sort of you know he did say well they keyed on him because you know okay uh, but that's what Spokane, that's, but that's what's going to happen well exactly yeah. spokane doesn't have a great team uh so they keyed on him well you know okay nhl playoffs is he not going to get keyed on if he's uh you know, <laughs> like if you're supposed to be a top, if you're if, like, if we're having this, this debate for the 12th week in a row, then maybe is Cat in a top 10 pick or not, right? If you're getting keyed on in the playoffs in junior, I don't care. Like, it's, ju it's junior. Go be, go be the guy and, and fight through yeah. it. Like, yeah. other guys yeah. are producing that are getting keyed on too. And maybe, you know, I guess again, you know, he's got Crystal on the, Crystal on the first line, whatever. That takes a big chunk away from it. But like, if you're going to be a top 10, 10 pick you got to be able to fight through getting keyed on in junior yeah yeah and may, and like obviously who knows is something maybe something's wrong with him maybe he's hurt it's like we don't well, know do we know the specifics of why he's missing u18s so that's yes it. i i did get word that so is, is he hurt that's why he's not going i okay, mean so there'd be no other explanation for well, it maybe, so then maybe you go the other way then and you cut him a little slack for the for the no, playoffs because if exactly. he's if he's playing that's, hurt, like good, good on you for being out there at all. So, you know. Yep, that was the you know the little scoop I had that the fact that uh, apparently uh, not sure what exactly it was, but it's nagging and decided uh, best to uh, not you know uh, hurt hurt himself more by you know perhaps you know getting uh, re-injuring or or making it worse, whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, it just doesn't make any sense that he would, wouldn't go unless that was the reason too. Yeah. So I, I tend to believe that, you know, a scout told me that that's what he's heard that he, the reason why is cause he's injured in it. And that's the obvious reason why Lindstrom, he had, I, I don't know if it was a back, but like he had had the wrist injury. And then he came back, and I think he hurt his back. I'd have to double check, but there was something else because he missed a game, right? In the in that series, yeah. And uh, you could tell he just wasn't a hundred percent in the series. So that one I understood, even when I heard the news, although I was disappointed. But uh, Catton, like, why is he not going? And I got confirmation that. Uh, it's because of injuries. So that's too bad. 
for yeah. him, you know? Yeah, it's, it's um, I mean, he was great in the summer, right? And if he'd have done Excellent. the same thing again, mm -hmm. people would have boosted him up a bit again. That's so it. I don't know if he's out. I think some teams have him in their top 10. Uh, I mean, I the last time that we were talking about him and I said that uh, all the scouts I talked to didn't have him top 10, I got an email like during the show that I checked from from a scout that said, yeah, I've got him top 10. So there is, you know, yeah. there's, a, there's at least one team that, that has them in their top 10. And I mean, it only takes one. If that happens to be the team that's picking ninth or whatever, maybe, maybe that, you know, he ends up going top 10. I'm not going to have him in my top 10. Um, uh, I just, I mean, even when you're, we've seen players fight through injuries and still, and still persevere at playoff time too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to go with what we saw. We can't presume, oh, well, let's cut him 100% slack because he may have been injured. Uh, Doesn't uh, sound like he may have been, though. Well, no, but, I mean, he didn't get a goal, you know. Um, from 52 goals to none in the playoffs, to go from 52 goals in 68 games to none in four, it, it, it just – it's not going to help the stock with me. I don't care if, you know, if he was injured or not. So um, it's not going to help a stock, not going to the, so, Hey, maybe at the end of the day, he drops more than he should. And a team ends up getting a, a kid that ends up being a great NHL or two. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can't predict these things. So, uh, you know, I, I, I expect them to go 10 to 15 probably. There are guys that don't even have them in the top 15, uh, believe it or not. Um, wow. But, uh, I mean, it was similar with uh, Jaeger last year. Everyone mm -hmm. thought, hey, he's a top 10 guy for most of the year. Then, oh, maybe he's 10 to 15, but certainly top 15. And then he goes, you know, what, 14, I think it was. So you just, you never know. Um, but, uh, hey. Heck of a junior, probably be a, a really solid NHLer, and uh, mm -hmm. it's just too bad we don't get that last look at him. That's it. No, I think it it's it's unfortunate for us as well, right? That every every scout that that was looking forward to getting a better look at these guys won't. So uh, and Canada, just, unfortunate for Canada. I mean, those two guys even more. Be yeah, there. that's it. Yeah, no. two of the best players on the team, not there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I don't, you know, I had them as the prohibitive favorites I, for this tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, probably still will because they're still going to be have a heck of a team. But when you're missing your what could be arguably your top two forwards, that's uh, that's not going to help. Not much you can do there. It sucks. sucks. I want. I wonder, like, because there's so many good guys. I, I wonder if if anyone gets a little shy about Lindstrom trying to base it a, a decision in the top three or four off of half a season's body of work. And the other thing too, like if yeah. the injuries with him, if they're, if they're all different injuries, that's kind of scary because yeah. you've hurt yourself a few different ways. Like it's not oh. just like, it's not just like an ankle that lasts, you know, you hurt the same ankle three or four times in a year, then you're okay for the next year. Like yeah. if you're hurting one thing, then another, then another, well, you know, well, two things. Like, look, look at Kirby Doc. Like you don't want, you know what I mean. Like there's a there's a perfect example of a guy who just can't get past injuries. So I, I wonder, and I don't know. I <laughs> Lindstrom still very comfortably in my in my top four for sure. But he, he gives you a, gives you a second to think about it and say, I maybe I wonder if if a team's going to take take an injury concern with him a little more seriously than maybe they would have if he had have been able to come back and and really look good at the U18s. I don't think yeah. there's a there's a history of injury. Like he wasn't injured last year a few times, and it wasn't multiple. Like it was two injuries. Yeah, this year. So I I'd be careful with that a bit. But again, has been playing so well that well, that's, the, that's gap, the gap between those two guys has closed. Mm, well, that's, that's right. 
if if Aginla scores another eight goals in the second round or something like that, I mean, don't but, be shocked if he ends up going ahead of. No, and man, like, and that's it. It could be a situation where guys just have the opportunity to move up, and and yeah. and even if your stock's not moving down, if if guys move yeah. up enough, they'll they'll pass yeah. you. Anyways, it's just you know, I, I don't mean like I don't think that some teams going to let them fall a crazy amount, but it, it it might enter the conversation if you're debating at number three, for example, what to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, hmm. and but then you know another guy that we like top five, Yakumchuk, he's not playing either, right? Uh, no. Nope. If Buham has a, I thought, did you watch the game last night? No, didn't Ever? see that. No. Okay. Uh, he was solid against, uh, it's good. you know, EU, right? Celebrini did not, uh, Celebrini didn't get his number. I thought, I mean, we all know how good Buham is offensively. I was very impressed with his defensive game last night. So if he, you know, if he goes up against BC, which is one of the, Offensive powerhouses of the last decade, easily, maybe of ever in yeah. college hockey, and looks good defensively against those guys. Quite a goaltender, too. He might, yeah, he might move. He might move into the top five discussion. I think. I think the five slot is. Well, um, even 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 the even from, uh, we can have this conversation again. Even from the two spot, but I really think that. Five spot, at least like Grant and yours and my mine. I think we agree. There's there's four guys that we like better than than the rest for the most part, and that that five spot there is wide wide open, and sure. and, Bum, and Bum is one one name that like if there is one of the lefties that goes that goes in that in that top five, I think it would be him for me, anyways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. He played a lot on the right side last night too. It's interesting. Jeez. Yeah, and that that which probably won't be the case at the NHL level. Yeah. No, but it's just it's impressive again. Oh, certainly, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a freshman, a freshman yeah. against BU and looks good defensively on his offside. Yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt about that. That doesn't tough. hurt at all. You know, that is tough. Wow. Yeah. Well, great discussion there, and I think we're gonna throw it over to another defenseman, Rocco. It's time. For Rocco's Riser of the Week. And this week, you're going to be talking to us about Spencer Gill. Let's have a look. So we've got Spencer Gill, a six foot four, 185 pound right defenseman with the Ramuski, Ramuski Oceanic in the, in the queue. He had 12 goals, 45 points in 65 regular season games and, and added five more assists in five playoff games. They lost their first round series 4 1 to Cape Breton. Uh, unfortunately, so Spencer Gill, he's from he's from a small town. I give a shout out to small town New Brunswick. He's from Riverview, New Brunswick. I was born in Miramichi, so I got a got a shout out to my New Brunswickers when I get a chance. Uh, his older brother Dylan is a Tampa Bay Lightning prospect. He was drafted in, in 2022, so good hockey bloodlines in that family there. So this was their this was their last game, the game that they got eliminated on. Um, he was really really he was really good in this one. He played I think 24 25 minutes. Was every second shift he was he was over the board. So in terms of his attributes, and you can see it straight away, his his ability to to move up and down the ice at six four is is quite good. I wouldn't call him an elite skater. But I would say he's very good for for his size, especially. Moves a puck quite well. He can handle it well. Um, he puts his passes. He puts his passes on the tape very, very regularly, which which you like to see. So you have the combination of, of size skating and, and puck movement ability, and automatically you're you're kind of excited about that anytime, um, especially as a, as a righty. He does see passing lanes well, and he is accurate with his passes. And two words that really kept coming up over and over in in my notes when I when I looked at my notes after the games that I watched were, were patience and poise. He's very, very patient in terms of letting the play develop and letting the play come to him and not forcing a play. And he's very poised when he handles the puck. And so those are very two very good attributes to have in, in a defenseman because he I find he has a little bit of a calming aspect out there for his team. Um, kind of is able to slow the play a little bit and not like an elite sense in the, in the terms of like taking over the game, but just, just kind of adds a little, a little calmness out there when, when he's out there. Zub does it for Ottawa too. You put him out there and it's like, okay, things are going to go fairly smooth here. And I find he had that, that effect on his team. 
doesn't really force a play almost, at least in this game um, and a couple others that I watched, almost ever does he force a play um, in his better games. Um, he's very, very careful with the puck, and he takes he takes what's given to him, which is, again, that, that comes from waiting for that play to come to him and waiting for it to develop. So um, he's very, very calm with the puck. Um, under pressure, he can handle a guy for checking him and and not panic with it and not throw muffins up the middle and not throw blind passes um, up the boards um, where guys where guys aren't even if he's expecting them to be there. Uh, he's very careful with that and he, and he is willing to take some contact to to make the right play in order to to protect the puck and and it, again that's something that kept coming over uh, kept coming up over and over in my notes is that safety or takes care of the puck or protects the puck. Um, he is very cognizant of of where he's moving that and and to make sure that he that he's not that he's not making any undue errors or any unforced errors, which is which is a big which is a big thing. Turnovers that don't need to happen can kill you, and those are momentum swingers and they're momentum killers. And if you go out there as a defenseman and you're you're not giving any of those up while you, you are able at the same time to to push the play the other way and contribute at both ends. That's a very that's a very good sign because it's going to give you your confidence. I mean, and you can tell he's got confidence from his coaches. He's playing 24, 25 minutes a night as a draft eligible in a, in a game that they had to win. Their season's on the line. Another thing he does he does know how to use his body positioning very effectively and very well. He's hard to push off the puck. He uses his body to shield off guys on 50-50 pucks and loose pucks really well. And I find he comes out. He comes out of the corner or a puck battle or, or a loose puck opportunity more often than he loses it, um, which you like to see. He's very, very simple and clean in his defensive game. Like I said, he's not forcing things, um, which is which is great. He's capable offensively, especially at the junior level. 45 points is, is a draft eligible defense with nothing to sneeze at. I don't think offense is going to be his calling card at the NHL level, but he is more than capable – to to chip in and and he'll get a lot of smart play points I think where he's just making making good simple um, reliable plays that that lead to lead to the forwards taking it up and, and getting assists and that sort of thing I don't see it I don't see a first power play guy by any means here um, but I do see a guy who can play probably maybe on you know ideally in your top four and and maybe chip, chip in on special teams here and there. I don't, I don't see him carrying the bucket offensively, but I don't think he's devoid of offensive ability either. You know, maybe a 20 to 35 point kind of guy um, average, I suppose in that sense, not a physical force. Um, he doesn't go out of his way to lay a big hit and he doesn't, uh, doesn't blow guys up, but he's, he's only 185 pounds still. So, you know, he's going to need to add, I think a little bit to that frame and maybe that part of his game, comes because he does he does finish his checks he's not soft he plays the body when it's there but he's just not running guys over good hockey sense anticipates well reads the game well in good position for the majority of the time um there's a lot to like amongst him he's in a group of guys for me that that is rightfully in the conversation as a maybe potential first round guy end of the first round anywhere after the early 20s i kind of have time for him um decent chance that he goes in the early second but but late first i mean i see it you get a 6-4 right hand defenseman that's smart simple moves the puck well skates well reads the play well there's, there's a lot to like and there's a high floor there with him so um that that is something that i could see happening towards uh, in the 20s sort of thing but in in the 30s it would, would be fine for him as well and um you know he's a maritimer so that's going to get him a few extra extra bumps um especially with me i'm yeah, come on. You love the Maritimers, Grant. They're good people out there. He's going to work his bag off for you day in, day out. Yeah. So, so I like him. I like him. And uh, I didn't I didn't watch him a ton throughout the season. I Maybe, maybe I assume because I spend so much time out east at home that I'll get to see him organically anyways, and I just didn't. So paid a little attention to him in the playoffs, and I was, I was really, really impressed. And for my money, he's, he's probably the top guy out of the, out of the Quebec League this year. It's, it's a thin year in the queue, but um, – He'd be he'd be the guy. He's a good 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 player, good prospect. Hmm. Muted. Oh, we're muted, Grant. There. When you're talking, don't dare say a word, eh? No, no, I'm just kidding. I was muted, so yeah. it was good, all good. <laughs> I was I was gonna say like uh, um, the uh, I lived in Riverview, um, had a newspaper called the Riverview Review. Try to say that quickly five times. <laughs> I 
uh, spent a year there, the year actually the of the O.J. Simpson trial. Just that's fitting. Kind of timely. Yeah. yeah, a little fitting. So, uh, um, yeah, no, I, you know, I was not in my head, but definitely uh, Maritimer is a good character. I mean, most of them. There's there's the odd there's the odd guy that you know, like Rocco that you know we're we're still not quite sure about, but yeah, most of them got good character. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, it, it was funny when you said 25 to 35, um, because uh, like 25 to 35 points, because that's where I'm think he slots also in the draft is 25 to 35 at this point. Yeah. And he's going to be at the uh, U18s, I guarantee mm -hmm. it, that he'll be on that team. And he uh, might play a big role. And, uh, you know, he might uh, he might move up into the top 25 discussion. If we, uh, we keep seeing the highlights, like what, again, you know, you keep getting, uh, finding good games. The last few guys you, you've profiled, uh, I've been impressed by, you know. You're, you pick out the good highlights and a lot of impressive stuff there in him, in his game. Um, guys have really come around on him as the years gone along, and I think most guys consider him to be the top prospect in the queue now. So uh, good, good on him. Good, good to get he's, some maritime representation at the top of the draft. He's a type of type of player too though that, that maybe like it makes sense that guys growing him as the year goes through because he has a quiet effectiveness to his game um and I, I think a lot of the times you come away it's like oh he didn't he maybe didn't notice him th that much but i think a lot of times that's a good thing for a defenseman you don't yeah. want you don't want to notice him and and again not to say he's devoid of offensive talent because you saw some some spits and spurts in there he can move the puck he can skate the puck and and he's a, he's a really good power play guy at the junior level sort of thing um, yeah. but, but a lot of time especially in his own zone you don't you don't want to notice him and and when you really pay attention to him he's winning those those really small battles ar around the ice that that from it especially as a defenseman are super important because they're the battles that start plays it's whether the puck stays in your end and you stay on the defending the cycle for another 20 seconds or if you're able to win that battle and, and start the breakout and get your ass off the ice right so he's really good at those kind of things which you have to pay a little closer attention to um you know he doesn't stand out in the same way that a, that a prek or a damadov does so kind of kind of makes sense that a guy like that uh, seems to get better as, as a year year goes on but uh, i'm interested to see how he does at the u18s and um especially against them some of the higher flying forwards in that tournament and you know if, if he can shut them shut them down and, and keep turning pucks over and, and sending them the other way um we're gonna hear his name called on on the first day of the draft yeah it'll be interesting to see if he plays on the power play and uh he'll be playing with better players than than he played with most of the year um maybe he flashes some offense that we see a little more offense than and good production from him so it, yeah I, i'm very very looking forward to seeing him at the uh at the at the u18s and he's a definite riser on our list we've got him now right at the you know the cusp of the first end of the first round so mm -hmm. glad to see another you know they keep on rising gotta yeah. like it yeah good stuff there so spencer gill is rocco's riser of the week now grant it is time. Let's talk some Ivan Demidov. Let's do it. Yeah, again, I hate to, you know, I just, hey, his his uh, his playoff has been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Come on. How hard is he to knock down? He's just so, is that stuck? Yeah, no, he's, he's just so hard to knock down. And uh, uh, you just look at that, eh? Top corner. Uh. What I got, what I did, where is is the highlights of all of his points, twenty five points in thirteen games in the playoffs. <laughs> That's just like the MHL is is good quality playoff, like good, the, especially the teams in the playoffs. It's good hockey. I've been mm -hmm. watching it for years, and these guys are pretty skilled. So, you know, I mean, you you try to you know you, you see folks comparing them to Michkov all the time. And when it comes to their career playoff numbers, I was having a look just because, uh, I mean, Michkov hasn't played in the 
KHL playoffs, but he played 27 games uh, of junior playoffs. Um, Demidov has played in two, two junior years. He's got 38 points in 23 games and is plus 30. Um, now, Michkov in 27 games, so four more junior games, 27 points mm-hmm. and plus six. So the decided difference in in you know come playoff time when it really counts uh of demidov stepping it up as opposed to uh, michkov at the russian playoff level um now last year both came up in the sk system but last year sk loaned michkov to sochi and then cap capitan's junior club in the playoffs michkov faced ska in the playoffs demidov and ska in the playoffs last year second round SKA swept Capitan in three straight. Demidov had three goals, and bear in mind he was a year younger. Michkov failed to score a goal and had one assist. So, you know, people wondering why SKA keeps loaning him out. Last year was his chance to prove him wrong at the playoff time, right? you think he would have been motivated. He wasn't able to score on him. So it's just interesting little, little tidbit to it as to why I, you know, personally – prefer Demidov to to Michkov as a NHL prospect. I just think he's bigger, his game translates better. He's uh more competitive. He beats opponents with his speed and strength and agility while Michkov is just the ultimate opportunist. You know, he's so smart, knows where to go on the ice, anticipates rebounds and just deadly sniper. But Demidov his skill is just so high level that He's just going to score at the NHL level, uh, KHL level, any level that he plays at, he's going to score. But you just have to sit back and enjoy these highlights and just, you know, his vision's great. His puck skills are great. Oh, look at this one. He bounces it off his skate and back to his stick and goes around, finds the guy. So, I mean, he's got all, he has all the offensive tools and whoever gets him, I, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if he's, uh, he puts up Kucherov, Kaprizov type numbers or mm-hmm. better at the NHL level. And I mean, in any draft class, you can get a guy that can score a hundred points or more for you. You, you. you have to take him top two. You know, if you redid the draft with Kucherov, he'd be top two. Uh, same, you know, Kaprizov would be extremely high Panarin. All these Russian guys that have come and produced so well at the NHL level, Demidov's, uh, I think he's more skilled than all of them. So, um, you know, Celebrini's going number one. I don't think, I don't, can't see. But if anybody goes at first instead of uh, Celebrini and we get shocked, it, uh, it'll be this kid because he's yep. just, he's the most skilled player in the draft. Um mm-hmm. And uh, had to had to have him as a player of the week. Nobody else uh, did what he did. No other prospect came close. So give him the nod one last time. Uh, co- correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't he have the highest point per game average for a draft eligible prospect in MHL history? That's I think, quite possible. He was two yeah, points a game. Yeah, he that's was two it. Points and, a game in the regular season, mm-hmm. and he's the he's. 1.97 points per game in playoffs. Nobody, That's, no, nobody's done that before. So absurd, and, right? So we're, we're talking about like one of the best Russian prospects in recent memory. Like, yeah, he's big time. He's big it's time. It's a for me. So, yeah, yeah. You know, what do you think there, Rocco? Oh, he's as, he's as slick as they come, man. I mean, there's not much. Not much I can say. This he, he's he's one of those guys where he, like anyone who's never watched hockey before, it could be your first game watching hockey, and you're like, oh, that guy is who's that guy? He's pretty good, right? Like he stands out to he's so he's so much better than like he looks like he looks like the guy who like played two years of low level pro and then came back to play with his beer league buddies, and all of a sudden looks like Wayne Gretzky. You know what I mean? Like he just out there against the guys, just like, ah, whatever, I'll, I'll dipsy doodle. Like I'll hang on the puck as long as I feel like it. I'll, 
I'll make a play when I want to. I'll score points when I feel like it. Like he's just better than everyone that he's out there on the ice against. And, you know, the only, my only knock against him is that I didn't get to see him in person, which I do think is a, is a huge thing. So, you know what I mean? There's things that you can't pick up on video, but his video looks as, as, as good as, as good as anybody's like, period. No, no, no qualifier. Um, he's, he's got skill out the wazoo, man. So, um, there's not much, not much not to like, except for, except for where he was born, honestly. Um, and, and other than that, like, what do you want out of a, what do you want out of a winger? Like, look what Kucherov does in, in Tampa Bay. And if he can get to that level, you know, that's a top three, that's a top three player in the world right now. So, um, and, and has been for the last several years, um, quietly. So he's, uh, he, he's my number two, and and I think that's that's pretty firm as, as much as I like certain other guys. Uh, I got I got nothing nothing but good things to say about this this Demidov kid. He looks like he can do it all. That's it. That's it. I, I think the only thing that can knock him down, like you said, Rocco, is is teams that are scared of picking a player that they haven't gotten a chance to watch. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that that's that's the only reason he could go further than two because otherwise like he's he's a lock <laughs> there'll be some reliance on uh russian scouts you know mm -hmm. they'll do their background uh digging as much but everything i've heard about this demidov kid and i mean i watch you know i watch after the goals too and uh, celebrations and all that his teammates love him they absolutely yeah. love him they mob him on the bench they're all smiling you know, you see a lot of when kids not really that liked. It's so oh, well, good goal and look away. You know, but they yeah. he's universally loved by his teammates. He's like he's a superstar, and often superstars aren't loved by teammates. But mm. they, you can just tell that he's just he's a down to earth kid. You know, uh, that it's not going to his head that just how much better he is than everyone else because he is at that level. He should be playing in the KHL right now oh, for. Yeah. SKA, but you know, their coach is a little anti kid. And I mean, that might be the other thing that maybe hurts him a bit. The fact that he's in an organization where he may, he may end up playing on their uh, KHL team next year and playing three minutes a game or something like that and not developing mm -hmm. a whole pile, but it's only one year. And I think that that will help him a lot. Could that, you know, it's one year of development that uh, even if he does play in the KHL and it's sporadic, I don't think he'll, uh, you know, he'll become a, a mediocre player based on one year. If it's three years of development, then you start to worry. But one year, I mean, we saw it at the the COVID year, right? A lot of kids didn't play at all. McTavish, did it, did it hurt McTavish as a, as a prospect? Did he develop? Yeah, he, you know. Did Wyatt Johnson develop uh, without playing much in his COVID year? Well, 32 goals this year as a 20-year-old. So, uh, I, you know, I, it will be interesting, but, boy, I can't see too many teams, uh, you know, at, at second overall. I mean, maybe uh, if if you want the defenseman, maybe Parak goes ahead of him, maybe. But, uh I can't see him going past the top three just based on just that skill. No, and and like like you said, it even, he's over there one more year, and even if they they stick it to him and they don't play him a ton, it's still a year practicing every day against guys who are in the second best league in the world, which right. is a major. I think makes can make a big difference. Like you look at you know you look at the NFL, the, the quarterback coming out of the draft that that sits a year sort of thing, and then his second year, all of a sudden he looks great. Well, it's because he practiced against against professionals for, for a full year. So there is development there for young players to be had just by being in that environment of being in the highest level. But the other thing with him, like, I wonder, I wonder how much of him being down um, this year and not being on the top team or next year, possibly not playing a ton of minutes. I wonder how much that has to do with the fact that he is only on a one-year deal and he didn't want to stay in Russia for, for longer term, like, like Capra's yeah. on and, and some of the others. Right. I'm not right. saying that's the case, but I, yeah. I'm not saying that's the case necessarily. I, I have no idea. That's, but I, I wonder. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. But it's good that he didn't sign that three-year deal too. Like, oh yeah. Teams will yeah. teams will like that. Take that. Oh, good for him. Yeah, yeah. It's good you for know? his NHL prospects for sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. For sure. but, but it may but hurt him. That, but it may hurt him sort of next year with with ice. Yeah, time. yeah, but, yeah. It'll be interesting with with that club. They don't, never they don't know. Love, they don't love but guys. But he can certainly help them, boy. Oh like sure. He, sure. He could be a really good KHL oh, he, player. No, he, should, he should be there. He should be there. Yeah. Right. And you know, it, I don't know if it's the second best league in the world anymore. You could maybe argue that because it's watered down quite a bit, uh, the KHL. But it's still, second. it's in that, it's in that discussion. For yeah, sure. second or third, whatever. You know, yeah. like it's right up there with the SHL and and uh, for sure. And so, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. So, Ivan Demidov, Demidov. Uh, we're gonna figure out how to pronounce it, but uh, our our boy Ivan here is our prospect. I, Ivan the Great. Ivan the Great. Ivan yeah. the Great, yeah, he's gonna he's get some. Terrible. He's gonna get some cool uh, uh, nicknames for sure. I'm excited about that. He's Ivan um, the terrible when you play against him. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah, when oh, you're yeah. when you're his teammate, he's Ivan the Great. Um, we're gonna jump into the the Habs discussion here. So Rocco, I'll save you the the, the trouble. But um, go sends go. <laughs> hey, big Montreal victory coming up on Saturday night. You love to see it. <laughs> All right, let's get him out of here. <laughs> Take care, Rocco. Have a good one. Bye, Rocco. All right, Rocco Zapia. Uh, joking, of course, because the Habs are going to lose. Um, speaking, <laughs> speaking it into existence. So, uh, speaking of the Habs, we got our Habs prospect of the week. And before we get to him, we have to highlight our, our good friend, Jacob Fowler, who yeah. had a shutout, a shutout. Uh, in an, el an elimination game against uh, Michigan last night. So huge, huge out. game for him. A uh, shout out for the shutout. There the, we uh, go. They were outshot 32 to 22. I mean, and, That's you know, Michigan has, th Michigan has three guys in the top 10 scoring in the yep. in uh, NCAA. So That's, That's no huge. small feat. To win 4 nothing, huge. despite being outshot 32 to 22, the goalie, the goalie had something to do with it. So uh, mm -hmm. great to see Fowler, uh, you know, when we saw last week with those dynamite saves he made, he oh. could have been the prospect of the week again this week, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Kapanen could have been again. Jeez. Like there were, yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't like to keep having the same guys uh, every week. So we give a little bit of love to this other guy that, Mm -hmm. is really off the radar so i'm looking and, forward and to we've it. given him some love before but yeah, it's, we have, it's, but it's been it's, a while it's earned right like he's he's earned it and that yep. being philip erickson let's have a look yeah this now uh this is engstrom going in which is kind of funny and he passed on back. yeah and uh there's uh there's our boy there and he gets open and Patum. Now, what's pretty cool about this uh, is it was his third shift of the game, and it was like second period. He'd he'd only played three shifts, uh, you know, up until this point in the second period, and he played 17 shifts the rest of the game, and scored another goal to tie the game late and send it into overtime. Now, uh, you know, he was in the uh, hockey Alsvenskan. What what's really neat about about him is that he he only played like 13 games last year, and it was a big reason why I think he wasn't drafted uh, till the sixth round. Because you know, I mean, I didn't even scout him; like, I didn't even know about wow. him, and uh, uh, and so he makes Faxio, the SHL club, right out of training camp not having played uh, only 13 games last year. So he did not play a single game of junior this year. Now, typically, like, I, I mean, you know, Ogren and I can name a whole bunch of guys that were first round picks. They usually play games the next year after their draft still back in junior, but he played the entire, he started the year with Vaxio. Then he got loaned to hockey Elsvenskan with Nebro. Uh, they got eliminated in the Alsvenskan playoffs. So he gets called back up to Vaxio and he's playing, you know, the first few games of the playoffs, he's playing three, four, five minutes. But then this is the second last game that Vaxio played. Roglet ended up beating him four straight and Engstrom's on to the next round. So we won't be seeing Engstrom in, in Laval, which is the unfortunate part. But you could see his confidence soar after that goal. 
And in the last game and a half, he was easily one of Vaxio's most dangerous forwards. Now, Noah Osland, who is one of my favorite prospects from the 2023 draft, mm-hmm. uh, in their final game, Erickson essentially replaced him. Now, Erickson, who was selected 149 spots after Osland in the sixth round, played almost 11 more minutes in, in the last game compared to Osland. 11 more minutes in Osland. Uh, who the Canadians love, by the way, and tried to trade out to draft with a 13th pick from wow. the Islanders that they received for Romanov. But then they went to plan B, which thankfully they did, and they ended up getting Kirby Doc. But, uh, I mean, like I say, he missed most of last year, and he wasn't on my radar. But then, you know, now to, in a must-win game, when they were down 3 nothing, he plays a top-nine role. He was mighty impressive. That's mighty impressive for a late round pick. No mm-hmm. Swede drafted in the past three drafts had more more SHL playoff goals than he does with the two goals that he got. So for a sixth round pick, you know, incredible it's just, value. Uh, it's incredible. And the biggest improvement I've seen in his game from last season is the skating. And you could tell even in limited action last year that he was intelligent player. But it was noticeable that he lacked high-end speed. Now, he must have had a great off-season in training to make Vaxio right out of training camp, like I say, having played so little last year. and never. Uh, but to come in this year with that lack of experience and to play pro hockey the entire year, to be uh, you know the leading s- Swedish player, uh, junior drafted the last three years in playoff goals in the shl is uh you know despite not playing a whole ton of time in the playoffs it's it's mighty impressive so you can see by all these highlights he's uh he really forechecks hard he's diligent on the forecheck so good compete level good work ethic smart um his size is you know he's maybe a tad undersized but he's close to six feet so I don't think size is an issue, but he uh, he gets to a lot of pucks. He knows where to uh, go in the offensive zone. He gets open. Um, he 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 looks solid for Nebro in the uh, in the uh, Alsvenskan playoffs as well. So uh, Oslin will be going off, I'm pretty sure, to Buffalo next year. Yeah. You know, and he'll replace him basically. In the you know, he'll take his spot as he did in the final game of the playoffs. And uh, he'll be a regular next year for Vaxio. And we'll probably see, you know, further development from him. But, uh, I mean, you know, Fowler, the play of Fowler, uh, Jack Eye, who's now who just got signed by the Canadians, um, Erickson, Definitely. to get those three guys after the top two rounds. Like, you know, we, we love Ryan Bacher wow. and he's looking great, but uh, it looks like a second straight draft that um, Kent Hughes is, um, has done rather well considering. And, you know, Absolutely. throw in Alex Newhook. So yeah. they get Ryan Bacher, Newhook, because they traded their other two picks that they had, right? Late first, early Late first second. first and early second. So, you know, you've got <laughs> – You've got Ryan Bacher, who could be a first pairing defenseman. You got Newhook, who's top nine for sure, maybe second liner next year. You've got Fowler, who might end up being a starting goalie in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got Jack Eye, who looks like uh, he'd be a consummate fourth line, physical, all around defensive, uh, v- versatile, can play center, can play uh, wing. And you've got this kid who. I mean, he's uh, he's made the bigger jump as anybody, any suite yeah. that was drafted last year in the draft. So uh, those are four excellent picks and they all have they all have good potential. So um, it, it's looking like it was a, it was a, a really solid draft by the Canadians again last year. Yeah. No, I have to agree. I have to agree there. That's and I think being a sixth round pick could actually play in his favor because he's got no pressure. Right, we're, we're we're introducing people to Philip Erickson. Some Habs fans don't even know who he is. So th- that fact, the fact that you know he 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 can just play, right? If he pans out, that's fantastic. If he doesn't, that's fine. He's a sixth round pick. He's not supposed to, 
You know what I mean? So uh, I, I think, you know, it, it, the progression that we've seen and, and what can be with him is, is mind blowing. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's that's as good as you can ask for a six round pick really like yeah uh, again they, they they knock it out of the park with this one it's it's obviously it's too early to tell that you know okay this this, this draft class for the habs is gonna it's gonna steamroll but eh, like you said grant it's it's looking quite promising indeed um yeah. well that's gonna do it that's gonna do it we 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 had a fun day today right lane hudson is officially a, a hab um, according to our, our good friend Jimmy Murphy from the sick podcast, The Eye Test, uh, Luke Tuck should follow not long after. Um, he hasn't been signed officially, but uh, according to Jimmy, it's it's almost a done deal. We should hear from that uh, fairly soon. Obviously, this, this show has been pre-recorded, right? So by the time that it's out, he might have already signed. We don't know yet. But uh, again, that's another piece that the Habs are adding, a big, strong power forward. If he's anything like his brother, pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Uh, yeah. Grant, yeah. Uh, uh, Tuck, um, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I I mean, he, he was arguably Boston's best forward last night. Boston U. Uh, he was Very excellent. Much. Scored goal, shorthanded yeah. goal. Uh, looked great. I mean, Kent, who better to do it in front of other than Kent Hughes, right? Right there. There you go. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's been talk that, oh, he's going to – the Canadians aren't that high on him. They should be because he, he to me, is just like uh, Jack Eye, mm -hmm. is, is an ideal – if you can have Jack Eye on one side and and, uh, and Tuck on the other on your fourth line down the road. Money. You know, stick a Kapanen yep. or Beck in the Ooh. middle there. Ooh. And Ooh. Be the best fourth line in the league. Come on. You're, you're, someday. you're talking so, my language I mean, here, Grant. Wow. Well, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, talk that he might, because it's his fourth year, he could say no to them. Mm. Well, there's a spot there for him. You know, yeah. Montreal doesn't have that type of player. He stands as good a chance of making the Canadians as any other team because they don't have many players of his ilk in the right. system. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the talk is, well, you know, he'll just say, no, I'm going to sign with Buffalo and go play with my brother, you know? Well, is there room? Know. Is there room? Yeah, Buffalo, I mean, right Buffalo's there. got a pile of good young, you know, top 30 picks that they've made in the last few years. Montreal is, is, is you know, he'll get opportunity. Um, he looked good in uh, Laval, for sure. Mm, you know, they, yeah. need him, they need him next game. They can get him. <laughs> get him and that guy, uh, playing together on a line. And um, and the last, I don't know the last Montreal Canadian pick that went the college route that didn't sign with them. Like mm -hmm. I've gone through before, and I can't recall if if it was it was like the seventies or maybe the eighties. Like it's yeah. been at least forty years since a a college kid spurned, you know, Montreal. You just don't. It's, it's, it's not gonna happen. You know, it's the mecca of hockey, right? So right. I mean. The greatest team ever. It'd be like saying no to the Yankees, you know, if you're drafted by them and you, you just don't, do that. right? So uh, yeah. I, I suspect that he'll be getting signed too. So looking forward to that. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Grant. Thank you to Rocco as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a comment. Leave us a like. Don't forget to check out recruits.ca for all your draft and Habs information. There's going to be scout testimonials on there. You can get all the info on all the top prospects. Um, thank you for tuning in until next time. Take care. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast recruits draft cast on YouTube, Facebook, Google play and Apple podcasts.